We now return to Let's Play Free Call. Something I didn't mention was uh, that because this is still in development, there is hardly any music. But that's okay. Alright, so first turn, after the first turn, it's actually a second turn, we get uh, to pick a founding father to work to get, uh, to work towards, how about? So uh, we can start with Jan de Witt, who allows me to trade with foreign colonies. Not very useful early on. Uh, Henry Hudson will increase the output of all fur trappers by 100%. Not useful because I have no furs to collect. Uh, Paul Revere, when a colony with no standing soldiers is attacked, a colonist automatically takes up any stockpiled muskets and defends. Okay, so this is who I was talking about last episode. Not very important starting out. Uh, Pocahontas erases all tension levels between me and the natives, who we have not met, and Indian alarm is generated half as fast. Uh, depending on your actions, the natives will sort of sour to your presence on uh, on their land. So she's pretty important later on. And William Brewster, no more criminals or servants appear on the docks. That's back in Europe. And uh, you can select which immigrant in the recruitment pool to move to the docks. Well, we don't have very good starting fathers here. Do I want this one, or do I want Paul Revere? I think I'll go with uh, William Brewster here. Um, from time to time, people in Europe will decide to emigrate to the colonies, and it tends to be criminals <laughs> and unskilled servants, indentured servants. Not very good. So by having him, he will prevent them from coming and we will actually get useful people who want to come and uh, that's actually important because otherwise you have to pay uh, you basically pay passage for people to come with you but when they come and appear on the docks you get those people for free and so having skilled people for free will help us out but I don't think we're gonna have that many people uh, who want to come. The way you can affect that is your church. It has these crosses and they kind of work like bells in that the more you have the more people are incentivized to come over to your colony for religious freedoms that sort of thing. But uh, I don't really intend to exploit that. Now that is... Um, we've arrived in Lisbon. That is what the English have as an advantage is that more people want to emigrate and uh, immigrate into the uh, the colonies. Okay, so we've reached Europe and right away I'm going to recruit some people and these are the default people who will be there because of the easy setting that we are on. Uh, the harder difficulties limit it to a few people or just one person or maybe even none. I haven't really looked at the hardest difficulties, but it will start me out with a carpenter who I will hire, the farmer who is important, the seasoned scout which is going to be good early on and then we can revert him to someone else and shoot we're left with petty criminals and indentured servants, which is not good. You can, at the beginning, customize who actually comes into the colony, and the carpenter is really worthless without a lumberjack. Now you can go ahead and train the people you need, but they cost a lot of money. A lumberjack costs 700 gold, and soldiers cost 2,000. Uh, you can also purchase cannons and new ships. Everyone else uh, besides the Portuguese and the Dutch start out with a caravel, um, which only has two slots 
in its cargo hold. Uh, these merchant men that we start out with have four, so it is good early on, as I was mentioning earlier, because I can now bring back more people rather than having to make more trips and slowing down that process. I really don't want to bring either of these people with me though because they are very slow to learn. Um, basically, as these guys are trained, they sort of level up and so petty criminals will become indentured servants, indentured servants will become free colonists, and if those free colonists are training in a profession, they will then become a farmer, a carpenter, whatever the uh, profession is. And you can build schools and colleges and universities which allow you to train people, which is actually pretty good. Uh, but that is not really doable until much later on. All right. Come with me. And it just filled him in with an, another indentured servant. Um, a way you can sort of cheat this cargo limit is to also fill up your colonists with a few other things. You can make them bring tools, which will turn them into pioneers, but it prevents you from having to use another slot to fill in with tools. Uh, you can also turn them into soldiers, which will give them muskets, or dragoons, which will... You can turn them into dragoons, which will t uh, give them muskets and horses. So that's a very good way to maximize your load. But we don't have a whole lot of money here, so I don't think I'm going to have them do anything, bring anything back, and I'll just send them back. Okay, rebel sentiment is now up 10%. That will go down as we bring more people in. Okay, and we've already got William Brewster. Well, that's good, because as we saw, the only people waiting in line next were the criminals and indentured servants. So now we have some new people. We've got uh, Peter Minuit, who makes it so that if we decide to put a colony next to Indian land, we don't have to pay them for it. We can take it from them. Um, we still got Hudson, Paul Revere, Pocahontas, and William Penn. William Penn increases cross production by 50%. And Maybe I want this. Yeah, because that will make uh, people want to come to the colonies faster. Okay, so let's unload some people here. Um, I think what I'm going to do, well first I'm going to put a farmer so we're making food, and I'll put a carpenter there. So now we are losing uh, six lumber a turn because I don't have a source and when I cleared that forest it gave me 20 but uh, that's not going to be very sustainable right away what I'm going to do though I'm going to take away the tools from this colonist I'm going to turn him into a lumberjack because he will learn that faster than an indentured servant so I'll just make him the pioneer and uh, he can finish the other improvements. So we're making some cotton now because I took those trees down so I got rid of the firs. Uh, that's not very useful. But as we can see, um, we're down to one food and two bells. So the next couple people I put into the colony are going to have to be a farmer and someone else who can sit here and produce bells. Uh, I could have the scout come back after he's looked around and if there's nothing important out there uh, I can have him sit in the town hall 
eventually we're going to want to train or hire elderly statesmen. Those are the people that uh, should be here and will produce the most bells. Uh, when you have 50% rebels in your colony, you get a production bonus, and they will start to produce one more of their goods, and when you have 100%, it's a bonus of two. You can have negative modifiers by having too many Tories in your colony. And as we see, now that I have a lumberjack and a carpenter who is making hammers, which are not the same thing as tools, uh, the docks will be done in nine turns, so maybe instead of a farmer, I should get a fisherman. So we can take advantage of that resource. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, Sons of Liberty membership has gone down to 3%. Uh, let's go ahead and get that one started, and... I'll send the scout off this way. Okay, we have discovered Brazil. Hooray. Uh, these heads here indicate rumors, lost city rumors, uh, of the Native Americans. <clears throat> and generally, you don't want to touch these unless you have, I think it's De Soto as the uh, founding father and he will make it so that when you go and explore these you always get a positive result. If you explore these without him there is a chance that you will get lost and just lose the unit. Um, you will come upon an Indian burial ground and the natives will declare war on you which is no good. Uh, but if you have good outcomes you generally get uh, well usually you get money, a small amount of money Sometimes you'll get colonists who are lost from uh, some other colony, and so they will join your uh, civilization. Uh, and if you're really lucky, you will find the Fountain of Youth. And the Fountain of Youth creates about a dozen or so people back in Europe who suddenly decide to come over. And a lot of them are professionals. It's just a mix of people, basically. But that is very good to find. Um, if you don't get these, the computer tends to go after them, and the computer will take the risk. Since I don't know my surroundings very well, I'm not going to take the risk right away. We'll just go around it and see if we can find a native tribe. Do I have? I do. Okay. Uh, okay, well, first of all, I want to bring these furs back, because... They are useless to me sitting here because I can't turn them into anything. This cotton is also useless, so I'll just take it back. We're not going to get much money for it. Let's go this way and see if we can reach the ocean any faster, which apparently I cannot. Yeah, that sucks. But that's okay. I think I can go back and forth in one turn because of my movement bonus. Okay. Well, there are the Iroquois over there. We will call this river Yapura. Let's uh, clear this out so I can at least see this. Be helpful later on when uh, we declare independence. Uh, if you travel along rivers, it basically acts like a road, so it you can see we've got uh, four movement and every square obviously takes up one except that hills and well if it's got something on it it's going to slow you down uh, so taking rivers is a good idea if you don't have roads going into a territory unfortunately I think the Iroquois settlement is more up this way so, uh, yeah, it's right there. We've met the natives. And we will name this... Graupara? I don't know. Someone teach me Portuguese. Okay, so I can still go there. Uh, let's see, they've got the Onondaga. I uh, have two villages. They want rum, 
but they will also trade trade goods and cigars. Trade goods you can only get in Europe, and they're only good for bringing back and selling to the natives. Um, a lot of these tribes will want these for a certain amount of time, and then when you bring them enough, they'll decide they want something else. So you have to sort of pay attention to their wants. Uh, let's speak with the chief. And he gave me a ton of gold, which is going to be wonderful for uh, hiring people and bringing them back. Because I'm going to need a farmer and uh, what else? Or a fisherman. Right. I'm not going to have enough for a statesman, which is too bad. But maybe I can bring someone else back instead. So, uh, they can also the uh, native tribes can also teach your people to be certain professions. Unfortunately, being a fur trapper is not very useful. Uh, they will... I don't think they'll train criminals, in, but they will train servants. So that is a very good way of getting those useless people into something more useful right away. Now, I could... If I settle the colony here, it looks like I would have access to a lot of fur. And a mountain that produces silver. Or just ore. I don't want to landlock it. Uh, you don't really want to landlock your early colonies. And uh, really, you don't want to landlock any of them if you can help it. But if we're lucky, this whole area will be open to colonization. But... Uh, you want as many as you can on the coast because when you declare independence uh, the invasion fleet or the uh, reclamation fleet or whatever you want to call it uh, will come and land and if they capture all your port cities you lose you need to con or, uh, control at least one port city ideally all of them <laughs> so uh, yeah. Okay, let's go back. Okay, and the Aztec are down here. Well, let's go visit them. Yeah, we got 9 gold for that, 24 for that. Okay. Ah, okay, so I've got a bunch of new people now here. That 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 was terrible. I've got a bunch of new people. Um, I'll take the free colonist, the scout. Well, a lot of things I've read say that you always want to take the people that have professions, because you can... Uh, have them unlearn those things and by default they will just go back to being a colonist uh, so it might be good just to grab all of these people this pi hardy pioneer is good to get uh, right away because they speed up uh, improvement times so I can take all those tools away from that indentured servant I've got and give them to this guy. Uh, let's well, let's take a colonist. Okay, well, it looks like ah, lumberjack. I'll take him too. Now, do I want to bring tools back? I think I might. Oh well, he's got tools. Yeah, he's got a hundred tools. So let's not uh, waste more money there. Let's head down. There it is. Okay, they've got one city. So, this is it for them. They want trade goods, but they will also accept cigars and rum. So, these guys might be good. They also gave me a lot of gold. I like that. It's very important early on to explore and try and find 
tribes just because of what they will give you. Sometimes they won't give you anything. Sometimes they'll give you more of the map to look at, which is nice. Um, ooh, this will teach me to be a farmer. So I think I will have, yeah, as soon as I come back and replace that servant, although, well, no, I don't want to put the second colony over here, I don't think, because if I do that, then uh, I don't know where this river goes. It might be an inland river <laughs> and uh, does not be able to interact with ships. So I would have to make a road and have a trade caravan go back and forth. If I build here, it looks like we'll be producing cotton. But there is this rumor, and until this rumor is explored, that square will be unusable. But that might be a might be a good place. I should explore this way first before starting my second colony. You want to start them out fairly soon. Uh, starting out, the years will go up one per turn. But as soon as you hit 1600, they will go two, which uh, doesn't actually make sense in terms of game, because suddenly your ship that takes three years to go back and forth will start taking six. But anyway, uh, I think before I continue on, no, well, no, we'll just keep going. I have a feeling that I'm going to have to have longer episodes for this let's play because it is going to be a very long game. I'm not sure if I want to keep exploring down that way or not. Let's go. If for nothing else, just to find all the rumors... Oh wow, this place goes way down. Looks like there's a lot of sugar cane, which is good for rum but it's all Aztec controlled and I don't really want to start a war with the natives that's a very bad idea okay so that's uh, that's plowed I guess I'll just go here ah the Arawak another Indian tribe let's go see if we can get something from them oh, out of movement okay Yeah, there's nothing to be gained from going this way. Unless I wanted to conquer something. Uh, the Arawak have two villages, want cigars. Okay. And they gave me a lot of money. Excellent. Okay, so let's, uh, let's replace that guy. Gets the same amount of stuff. In one turn... The docks will be done, and hmm. Well, maybe I'll just make them farmers or something. I don't know. Nothing is being built. Okay, so what should we do? Uh, the lumber mill. We're making six extra lumber. The lumber mill will improve the number of hammers we make, and thus we will be able to make things, other buildings, uh, more quickly. But it also uses up more lumber to do that. So a lot of people seem to think that building a stock or a, a lumber mill, a warehouse, and a stockade are the order that you want to go in. I don't really think we're under threat right away. I don't know, a surplus of six? I'm not really sure. I think... Okay. Let's just do that. So, we'll set that up. And, uh, let's see, what can we put on board? We can put more of that. Actually, I could just use it. 
Yeah, I don't want you to produce lumber, I want you to produce fish. And I guess I'll need this guy making bells. And I could have him produce cloth. So at least we're not wasting that and we have something usable. Again, those bells are going to be a problem. If I brought that indentured servant back, I could put him here. Although now I've got enough to make a statesman, or to hire a statesman, so we'll do that. That's a much better idea. And I guess I'll just use him to do some improvements. Um, I think I'm going to send him back. Yeah, there's nothing to get from down here. So I'll send the scout back, and we can go explore this way. Unless I could get my hands on DeSoto. Oh, it's going to take us 51 turns to get William Penn. Uh, well, we're not going to get that exploration bonus anytime soon. So hopefully we will we'll, uh, make some exploration. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to go this way. The isometric is a little bit weird because you have to use the numpad to move, or you can click on the uh, square that you want to go to, of course, but I get confused sometimes in what direction I'm sending people. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this expensive statement. Um, why don't I get a fisherman as well? I think it'll be worth it. Because once you get a professional, you can, like I said, train other people. What do I want to do here? Should I spend the extra money to bring back something? Or should I bring back people? Oh! Yeah, that's right, I've still got people. Um, ooh, an expert silver miner. So if I... Well, if I started a colony up there, I could mine silver, which you can just trade straight up for money, since it is money. Um, I'll, I'll wait. Let's go explore over here and see what we find. Doesn't look like much. Okay. Well, let's have... Hmm. I mean, if I grab this scout, I'm just going to turn him into a free colonist because I don't need more scouts. So let's, um, let's just grab a colonist. What did that give me? Ooh, a distiller. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I have access to sugarcane. Where am I? I'm too far north. I mean, as we see, it's down here, so if I made a colony down here, like right there, but that would be on the inside, and uh, it would be very difficult to get to anyone unless I wanted to just sell it straight up to the natives. But it would also be isolated and out on its own, and I didn't see that this guy taught a fisherman. Damn it. Oh well. I can always uh, exploit that later. This guy, yeah, fur trapper, useless. Okay. So, I think these are definitely going to be very slow episodes, but we'll see. I will see you next time.